dude. <laughs> so many seeds just coming in. Like, how am I supposed to keep up with this shit? First round is ending now anyway. To be honest, we're not missing shit on the... What? Dude, the numbers of people fucking playing, it's just, it's multiplying, okay? It it was not that many before. Now it... <laughs> what the fuck? Ben, uh, is there any chance you could tell me uh, how many people are actually queued in right now? I'm, I'm sure you probably have access to that statistic, right? Waiting for players. Three seconds. Here we go. Are you are you at home? Oh, oh yeah, shit, it's a Saturday. What the fuck? All right. <laughs> All right, so uh, Anik is on uh, Solbis with bear stance using longbow. Axe, axe for the deflection, the uh, defensive uh, weakness output, chill, duration, uh, wilderness, beast mastery, and Solbis. Uh, on demolishes and the little runa leadership. So this is again very very offensive. Good sustainability. Alternity is playing power show rev. So it looks to me like staff swords, sword sword. Yep. O on marauders leadership. So again this is the conquest meta. Uh, Target tick is playing five round support. Uh, and of course, okay. So th they're literally running the uh, the standard duo meta, uh, I guess, which is obviously the uh, the scourge output. This is probably on dead shot curses. Uh, yep. Yeah, so it's got runa scavenging, curses sorry ping. Okay, so basically the way that you beat this is just to wait until the two minute mark if you can sustain it. Um, they can play the kiting game and they can just like, you know, infinitely jump around, force them to chase. They need to wait the full two minutes. So at the moment, the, the red team are doing the smart thing by not like fully engaging. Uh, that said, the Revenant did just get caught out. That They are getting some burst out onto the Scourge, but they can't play underneath. Don't play in the, don't play in Ghastly Breach. Please do not, whatever you do, don't play in that shit. Uh, it's not worth. They're going to turn their uh, their eyes onto the Revenant because obviously the Revenant is the one that can sustain less. Infused Light is on cooldown. They get a ton of burst onto him. Holy shit. Does Targetic have Signet Mercy? He has Signet. He might even be forced to use it. No, they do get the res. And because the Revenant overcommit, he's going to die to uh, conditions here. Potentially, he has 400 health. And there we go. Uh, will the Sobeys get the res? I think he has the res trait. Uh, no, he gets feared. Oh, double fear gets... The oh, my good God. So they overcommit underneath the Scourge, and the Scourge uh, was doing out enough damage, with the, even with the, bit, the, uh, the Firebrand output. Now, the, the, I think that the Ranger could possibly still win this if they wait until the, uh, the two-minute cutoff point where there's going to be low healing because the Firebrand isn't going to be doing anything, right? So he could possibly turn and just, like, fuck the, uh, the Scourge. In, uh, in seconds, right? Now, please... Oh, okay, he's got a lot of conditions. He's running with Torment. He's killing himself. There's the... Wait, what? He got the resistance from the F3? He's just gonna die here when that runs out. <sighs> Jesus Christ. I mean... For a minute there, they could have had that. I'm trying to think what they could have done instead. Yeah, why didn't he Axe 5 it? That's a, that's a good point. Why didn't he do Axe 5? Axe 5 over the body would have been a really good idea. Three to four hundred in EU. Okay, so almost four hundred people. Well, four hundred teams. So that would be what eight hundred people. I mean, that's a good turnout. I think that's a good turnout. By the way, if anybody is watching the stream and you are playing the 2v2 as well, uh, if somebody does relog in your game, take note of their names and uh, we'll be passing them over to CS, aka customer support. They'll do something about it. All right, so once again... Oh, wait. Revenant has swapped to, uh, to Hammer here. So so he's not running staff for the CC output. Does have uh, the Hammer for... <laughs> it's a mighty bronze hammer. But he's looking to use the, uh, the range damage there to punish perhaps at the two-minute mark. Uh, once again... Uh, Scourge on the same thing. They are using the uh, Sand Flare utility. Uh, you, utility, but it is a utility. It's a healing utility. Uh, obviously, because that barrier is much better than just flat healing uh, or sustainability. Uh, because, I mean, especially, like, consume conditions is pretty garbage. Uh, especially when your opponents don't really have any conditions. But, in general, the uh, the barrier is better to have uh, when it gets to the two-minute mark. Because barrier persists and uh, the healing does not. Barrier just does not count as healing. Once again, the Revenant does go down to the overcommittal into the uh, into the into the condition output from the Scourge. Uh, Firebrand is getting the stomp once again, and now it's down to the Soulbeast to try and do something. But unfortunately, 
uh, trying to make that work into uh, a no sustain comp is just ridiculous. Uh, and the, to be honest, that's kind of the way I expected it to go. If you're not going to be able to kite people, um, you're going to get punished. Uh, and what they really needed to do is just like waste their time there. Uh, and again, I think staff would have been a good weapon set to keep. They, they could have potentially swapped out to have sword shield so that they had blocking output. Um, prevention of, uh, you know, condition out uh, application. Uh, and that would have increased the sustainability of the Revenant. But GG's nonetheless. Sauron a Brib? No. Drawing a map out? No. Uh, blue card? Ooh. No, the finals haven't even started yet, dude. Okay, so actually we're just in time to witness the second round of this game. So Blue Car is playing DH. There's a lot of sustainability in the Dragon Hunter. Um, he is utilizing Paladins for, sustain for extra sustain and uh, toughness output with Rune of the Dragon Hunter. Uh, he's using Sword, Shield, and Longbow. The uh, Soul Beast of the Red Team is utilizing Berserk. So he's doing long range damage with that Longbow. Adds a punishing knockback as well. So point blank shot plus the great sword as well. That's even more burst output on the rune of strength. Um, is utilizing uh, Warden of Survival, Beast Mastery, and Dagger Proficiency on the Soul Beast. Uh, the Soul Beast has gone down here, getting not going to be. He does get the interrupt on the Soul Beast. However, you got to remember that the Soul Beast is actually uh, playing Berserker, so he's going to have like no health in downstate. Uh, Delaria, aka Luna, is playing the Meta Soul Beast build. So this is with Moa Stance and Doliak. Uh, and I can see he's got Axe Axe. Uh, he's probably got Sword War Horn, so I would expect no, nothing different. Uh, and then Frost Trap Hero, him raving, is playing Sword War Horn Druid. So actually, they do have damage output, but sustain as well uh, on the Mender's Amulet there with Rune of Sanctuary. So he does still have power application um, uh, on uh, staff here with Sword War Horn. So uh, standard uh, to be expected, I suppose. Um, when you have sustainability into a comp with no sustain, the idea is just to wait it out. And I don't think the blue car is going to be able to do anything there. And goodbye. That's one game that's over. Okay, that was a very, very quick game. That was less than a minute. <laughs> oh my god. Here you go. You can watch Tramadex kill some people. As the elixir is passive, he won't be able to get laboratory. There you go. Wow. Wow, how exciting. There we go. Well, that was worth it, wasn't it? You got your 30 seconds of, uh, of content there. I hope it makes the difference. Is it random which arena you get? Yeah. The map is completely randomized. I don't have any copyright shit that I can use, or non-copyright shit I can use. So you have to deal with the silence. Uh, okay, so Belly Dance aka Floody. So Floody is playing with Sindana. Interesting. He's utilizing Elixir X. Uh, this looks to be on Demolishers with Rune of Leadership and uh, Alchemy. Taught. This is standard. It's full full uh, Conquest standard. Uh, Big Sin obviously playing Sword Dagger Thief. Uh, does have Infiltrators and Dagger Storm. Him, so they're running the double soul beast. This is cancer as fuck. What the hell? Uh, so him raving does actually have smoke scale for I suppose he can utilize the smoke field of the smoke scale as well as high burst output. Uh, they get the knockdown on uh... Oh my god. So Sindona actually used infiltrator signal there to break the stun and then started dagger storming immediately hard punished him raving out uh, Him raving is utilizing sword axe with axe warhorn So he has good evasive weapon sets, but also good damage uh, and that's what demolishes with rune of eagle uh, Delaria is uh, also running the same build, it looks like, uh, with Axe, Axe, Sword, Warhorn. So this is the meta build on Paladins and Ruler Leadership. So I suppose there's slightly more damage on him raving. However, he is slightly more squishy and has gone down as a result of that. Uh, Sindrina is very low, but that does not matter. Luna has gone down. That is both Soul Beast farmed. Believe it or not, that's quite, it's quite weird, isn't it? To see something that is so sustainable in, in Conquest PvP get completely and utterly annihilated. Um, it looks to me like him raving is actually relogging. Um, I mean, I don't think they're planning on coming back in uh, into this into this round, although he will. Uh, he is currently alive and able to play the round, but uh, he's not going to play that.
Or I feel I'm not going to risk it with any music because any music that I do listen to will uh, potentially block my content to certain regions and or it may uh, get me um, demonetized. So no risk, not doing it. All right, so uh, we actually see here a core engineer. Uh, I think it's core, <laughs> is it core condition? He's on Vipers with Rune of the Elementalist. Oh my God. Shield pistol? Oh, oh wait, no, was that, so wait. Yeah, it, it's pistol, pistol. Sorry, what, the, ugh, fucking shield, man. Um, so he's looking to do some really quick application of uh, condition damage there. Does get a ton of damage out onto Floody and the Moa stance as well. I believe that Sin actually used Signet of Agility on there uh, to clear the conditions and now they're just uh, isolating him. He's on Vipers, so he's very, very squishy. There's the passive application. And if anything, he, he worsened his survivability on that for a meme. Um, they had too many methods of condition clearance, in my opinion, to actually benefit from that. Gets the knockdown straight into hollow. Trying to utilize the uh, the jumping puzzle in here to prevent Cinder, for example, jumping in. Cinder's killing himself on uh, retaliation there uh, into the uh, into the soul beast. They're getting the, the constant daze from the poison field. He actually dodge rolled the steel there. That is infiltrators into. Uh, Dagger Storm. Daria did get the... Actually, no, he did not get uh, the Plasma. There's no way that he sustains that. All right. Alex. Oh. What is this? We've already missed one round. Uh, red team are one up already. That is Wing and Cookie, the uh, the duo from rank 55. They are contesting into Zakiki and Flandry. Zakiki and Flandry have actually won uh, one of the, or multiples of the 2v2s, I do believe. So we do have a Scourge here uh, on Wing with Sage Amulet. So he has the sustain of Blood Magic, which is going to be applying a ton of barrier to both him and the Firebrand. Uh, pretty much consistently all the way up to uh, the two minute mark and even past it. Uh, and then Cookie Monk is playing. Uh, he does actually have some condition output, uh, and that is on Radiance Firebrand. So he's going to be doing uh, some burst power application, but does have sustainability to apply, uh, you know, that to uh, his scourge should they get hard punished. Uh, Zakiki is obviously being punished here as well. Uh, Smoke Screen does go up, but I think he's going to go down to this one more auto. And there's two stacks of blade. He doesn't have anything left. He can't clear it. And that's going to be it. So now it's going to be Flandry versus the Firebrand and Scourge within the next five seconds because he's waiting for the lack of, uh, of healing. There's the cutoff point. Can he do it is the question. No, Flandry, what are you doing? <sighs> you do not want to do that. This is going to be incredible. If Flandry does this... It's going to be incredible, but I mean, how is, how is he going to eat through that much barrier? There's 7,000 damage worth of barrier there that you've got to cut through. Holy shit! Oh my good god! Oh my god! Dude! Flandry just likes to defy his own death. You can't res, Cookie! It doesn't work! <laughs> Holy shit! Yo, dude, if Flandry had actually managed to do that, that would have been clutch! Holy fuck! And Flangy was obviously on the uh, on the hybrid mirage. That was that was fucking poggers, dude. Age of Shadow. Flandry's out. He's been eliminated. Angels is playing with Teapot. Ooh. So he's on uh, Elixir Hollow, but utilizing Elixir B instead of Elixir S. He doesn't want the sustainability. He just wants flat burst. Uh, he has the sus uh, sustenance. Uh, sustainability that's coming from uh, the Firebrand. Now, it's really interesting that he does have Signet Mercy. I think that's completely wasted. Uh, at least at the two-minute mark, you're never going to be able to use that, so it's a wasted utility uh, entirely, although he does get passive healing power from it, so maybe he does get some slight benefit. Uh, the red team, they have a Scourge, again, utilizing... I keep using utilizing, or just use a different fucking word, but Soul Reaping with Curses on Deadshot, Rune of the Traveler, does have Sand Flare, so additional barrier output uh, when it hits that two-minute mark. And then you have the Firebrand again, who is a, a sustaining uh, healer. Now, uh, I think that the damage they're going to be able to do at that two-minute mark is going to be much higher from something like Angels, who's going to be able to block the condition output, which is very smart. He saved his fault on wall. Um, 
this is yeah that's good that's really good because they're forcing them away from the uh the upper level like i think the 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 best benefit is actually he gets pushed into the fucking dude okay that's it He's gonna try and res? No, that's not gonna work, buddy. No, you can't res. Just like Cookie just found out. There's the elite, the immunity. What are you gonna better? There's nothing you can do here. You can't self heal. That's it. Goodbye. Knocks him. Dude, that's BM. Knocking him into the fucking field. And then Teapot goes and stands in it. What's wrong with you? <laughs> All right. So uh, there we go. Angels and Teapot have won both of those rounds. On to the next game. Just because I haven't seen him yet. Fly and Tramadex. Okay, so I don't know if they've actually played around yet. So we actually have Drazy and Dakaho playing together. So Drazy and Kazes. Yeah, so no ROM. Oh, dude, that sucks. All right, so on the uh, the Mirage here, we have Starfax Torch. So this appears to be the standard meta build. He's on Rune of Avenge show with Carrion. I'm surprised he doesn't have Chaos, to be honest, for, uh, for Boon Up time. Uh, does have uh, illusionary ambush no portal obviously um you just spectated trauma yep what do you mean i'm on it uh this is a very uh, close game in fact so they're running double mirage uh this is mirror matchup builds as well actually so both uh both of drazy and um cases are running the same build traumadex playing his trauma war of course uh which is pretty effective into mirages i would say as long as he can kite the initial output from those mirages and then you have fly a thief is very very effective into a mirage uh for certain because you do have the consume plasma you have dagger storm uh, and that does a ton of damage uh, as long as tramadex can sustain this long enough he's gonna be good they're very slowly picking off cases this is surely this is in the blue team's favor a hundred percent because he, they can just disengage they have steel up he lands the steel. He's got consumed plasma. Look at all those boons, and there's no way that Janone is going to be able to do anything into that. So that is a win straight up for the blue team. Now, uh, obviously, you know, Mirage is very broken, and we know that to be broken in Conquest. It's very hard to play into. Tons of uh, confusion output uh, and, you know, condition galore. Uh, but obviously, when you're countered straight up by uh, Thief, you need to know that you have to play slightly differently. So we can see that there is a, uh, an adjustment coming in here from Dakaho. Um... So he will be swapping class, um, which is Kazes, I believe, is, is swapping there. Um, to what, we shall soon see. He might even be going somewhere like Engineer. Core Guard. Okay. Core Guard, Core Hammer Guard, in fact, on Valkyrie, Rune of Traveler. Um, not sure he wants to run Rune of Traveler. That's interesting. Uh, Radiance, Valor, Virtues. Okay. The, the thing that's OP about staff output on Mirage is literally just that it's uh, it's got very, very good sustainability. That's a huge burst that comes out into Fly. Fly does eat a lot from the condition output as well. Uses Dagger Storm to disengage. Uh, his elite is now on cooldown. He's got nothing left, and it appears that that build, so that slight change, did work in their favor. Now, Tramadex could possibly 1v2 this. You know, there is a lot of kit on the... Uh, holy fuck! Fuck my ass. He went straight down. I was going to say there's a lot of kid on Trammel War, uh, but Rampage is now down and he does not get to utilize that uh, the damage output. He can kite this for a while. I just don't think that he would be able to persist it uh, all the way uh, through uh, the two minute mark. Even if, even if he did make it that far, I don't know if he would be able to kill them. He has to use the majority of his kit just to sustain. How are you going to get any time to put damage out? All right, so that is a 1-1. One, one. This is going to come down to the wire. Holy shit. I mean, yeah, you, again, you could use the uh, the F1. Just apply, like, the burn stacks to your team and then let them uh, apply that on prestige. So if you don't dodge that first engagement, hell yeah, it's punishing, dude. Hell yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm just very happy right now that we haven't seen anybody abuse the bug. Can you maybe spectate Crazy Dexa, please? Want to see the build? Uh, no. I say no because the dude's toxic as fuck. I don't give a shit. If he's in the final or whatever, then, you know, he's, he's the only person I have left to spectate, then great. But unlucky brother. 
Um, so Korgard immediately looking to punish Fly once again. Uh, Fly gets out with uh, Steel directly onto Janun. He does have Daggerstorm again for the evasion frame, and I believe that he did land the Steel as well. I can't tell because of Spectator Bug. Uh, there we go. He does get the Consume Plasma up, so he does have Stab and Protection uptime and Resistance, which is great. Uh, Tramadex is now turning the uh, the punishment directly on towards that Guardian. Steel is up for Fly. He can disengage. He gets the Steel on the heel. So Crazy Madness is going to be forced to use his uh, Elite here. It is on cooldown now. Uh, there's the attempt of the Banish. It's whoever goes down first. Fly is low, and so is the Core. The Core has gone down. Fly is down as well. This is going to come down to the Mark. He's... No way, dude. Fly TPs away. God damn it, please! Wait, neither one of them rallied? What? I actually think... Wait, no, dude, Fly died first. Where's the rally? Okay, so now we're down to a 1v1 that's going to carry this. Now, I believe Traminates can win into a Mirage. I believe in him, dude. I'm a little bit one-sided. I'm a little bit biased. Courtyard is a 2v2 map. Oh my god. Okay, so there's the evade frame of Bull's Charge used and the Great Sword 3, so he preemptively dodged there. Uses the Sword 2 to escape the uh, the prestige there on the Torch 4. Does have the evade frame of Great Sword 3 once again. Lands the. Did he. He missed the Arcing Slice actually, so he didn't get the Mage Bane Tether, and that's what he's looking to proc here. Does get the full counter, so he does have additional resistance uptime and uh, regeneration. Has Rampage as well and Bull's Charge to use yet again. Misses the Bull's Charge, has 15 stacks of confusion. You gotta be careful here. He waits it out on the uh, the shield five. Great sword three actually gets the full counter. Great sword three. Oh god, there's so much persistent fucking. Oh, that's so painful. God, Mirage is cancer, dude. He did everything he could, and he used all of his kit just to avoid that damage. That is shitty. That poor, poor man. Dand into Galhadir. That's pain into uh, Xanadan, right? Okay, we're 30 seconds out, but we see Misha and Zan. Here we go. So uh, this is into Pain. So um, actually, Pain is played with rank 55 and Vin Aeon. So uh, this is actually, is this full sustain or, or Menders? So Menders with Rune of Flock, uh, Valor, Honor, and Firebrand. Okay, and that is obviously with the uh, the Thief. So actually, I think that they have the better comp into the red team. Um uh, Zan playing old school fucking hollow? Like, what? wait, what is this? So inventions with uh, product time so he can share boons to Misha. That's probably pretty smart on the hard light. Has Spectrum Shield for anti-conditions. Uh, and has Mortar Output for, I guess, uh, field dominance. So he can put down chill. He can put down, like, tons of self-heal uh, as well. Gets the AoE knockdown. Oh my god. Pain is possibly going to go down here. He does have sustainability for... Ve Never mind. That's completely reset. Oh my god. So just to clarify, Misha is playing Carry and Amulet on Sword Torch with Axe Pistol. Uh, Dueling Illusions and Mirage. Loveless is on Valor Honor. Uh, we showed this already. And then Pain, I believe, is just running the standard meta build. So Rune of Holbrack, actually, for Might Duration, Boon Duration, and uh, lower condition output. Uh, dude, this is going to go down to the two-minute mark, and then I believe that it might go in the favor of the red team. But so they need to make something happen before that. Because Aeon is pretty much going to become useless at that two-minute mark, and it's all going to be on pain to actually get something done. They want to keep them low as they go into that. They okay now they can they can punish because I believe that the uh, passive is on cooldown for Zan, and now they have no healing. So now Aeon is going to be going balls deep, trying to get as much damage output as possible and CC output. Pain is obviously the priority here because Pain will go down first, and there's no sustain. Uh, there is. They're getting the stomp with the portal? Oh my god, Misha, that's disgusting. Why are you running portal? And there goes Aeon as well. Oh my god, that was well sustained by Zan and Misha. That is so disrespectful, Misha. What the fuck? Why are you taking portal in 2v2s? Are you that cocky? Fuck me, boy. I mean, that was good. That was still good, but when it, when it gets to that two minute mark, like, all healing goes out the window. So if you have a Firebrand that's pretty much all heals and no damage, well, you're a bit fucked. I mean, I don't know if he's running it just for swag. I think he was running it because, like, it does give him uh, benefit of, you know, terrain. 
Why is Misha playing a furry? I have no idea. We don't see any changes made. That is... Oh, so there is Sanctuary on the uh, on the Firebrand there. Misha pushing straight in. So he is using Axe Pistol. Axe Pistol. Uh, Sword Torch. Nothing new. The thing is, they, they can pretty much negate a lot of the damage that comes out in the early, uh, early game. Just by using the, the Firebrand. So... The first two minutes, I think, aren't even really uh, gonna provide anything. I mean, obviously, it wastes some cooldowns and shit, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. They portal out. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> All right, so Paul's not gonna be up for. Actually, no. Yes, it will be. It will be back up. Um, I guess that's somewhat smart. Maybe that allows them time to actually spike out a fucking target, dude. I'm chatting shit. They isolate the rev. He's got sanctuary over him, so I think that uh, Aeon will be able to get this. Oh, come on. They do get him down, and I will see you later, Pain and Aeon. Unfortunate. Misha and Zan going for that duo of Destiny. Of course they will. Of course they'll be pushing for that shit. He got stunned. He was swapping... Uh, I believe that he was swapping to use Infuse, and uh, he got stunned on the Pistol 5. Okay, we got Helix into Captain Beach Bomb. Let's pick one very quickly. Send it into Age of Shadow. Here we go. I don't know how uh, how far this one is. Angels and Teapot have lost the first game, it appears. Is there a better one? Oh, that is going to be a good one. Yeah, we can watch this this one, though. Because oh, this one's going to be over relatively quickly, I, I expect. I'll keep an eye on that one, though. Um, so we have Chunzu, who is uh, playing... Looks like Radiance Firebrand, actually, whilst being sustainable. Yeah, Radiance, so looking to do some high damage output, but able to sustain Synod. And Synod is playing Scourge on uh, what might be Wanderers on Curse of Sorry Ping. Uh, yeah, Wanderers amulet up with Rune of the Undead. And then Angels, of course, is playing the standard Elixir build to do as much uh, damage as possible on those Elixirs. And then you have the Resustain of uh the fire run there so once again uh th the problem with the blue comp is that it's going to be very sustainable even after two minutes right so it has the barrier up time but it also has very very high damage output um on that uh, radiance fire run it's actually pretty disgusting that they're focusing the scourge i don't think that's the i don't think that is the play i think if you want to kill anybody your focus should be chunzu chunzu has been forced to utilize uh, or use rather his um his renewed focus here They, like, who they need to kill is the Fire Run. I mean, obviously, they can't just eat the damage for free, but considering that Angels has, like, free sustain pretty much on the back of his Fire Brand, he should just be trying to kill the the, uh, the, the Blue Team Fire Brand because that's that's basically where his lead is going to be. If he gets the Fire Brand down, Blue Team lose initial sustain, and, uh, you know, he doesn't really have that much anyway because he was on Radiance. Um, but we'll, we'll see if he actually manages to do that. Punishing Synod... Synod could go down here in all fact. He's got fucking 10% health, does get the barrier, and does have heals pumping out from the Scourge. Uh, sorry, from the Firebrand. Uh, there is 18 seconds left in this for this to uh, transition into something that may resemble a complete, uh, a complete, complete clusterfuck. Uh, there's the knockdown on the rifle four. Angels isn't even really interested in fighting this. You needed to... Why are they... Why? Why are you moving away? You needed to... You needed that, dude. You needed to push that. Okay, so actually this is really good for them because now the fire run is very, very low going into it. Never mind. He had like 10% health. They CC him out and now Angels is gone. That's over. All right, let's go to the next one. Uh, Angels through there. They should have just persisted on the Synod. They should not have given him that time to breathe. At all. They almost had Synod. That would have been the win condition. 100% that would have been the win condition. I don't know what, like, they, they literally left Synod on 10% health. We can watch this for a sec. Ooh.
All right, so yeah, Floody's getting punished here. He's gone down as well. Sindono is already down, so it looks like the red team have actually won the first game here. That's Tenebrae on uh, what looks to be Sword Sword Staff on Power Shiro Rev. Standard. Uh, and Groston playing Radiance. All right, so a hell of a lot of damage. Okay, okay. I want to keep an eye on the, uh, the Kazer Zan game, though. Okay, they haven't gone in yet. Perfect. So at the moment, red team are one up. t bot just said you should have went in on them. I mean, yeah, that, like I said, that was the win condition. Sindrina, that's not Sind, uh, Synod would have been down. He would have been completely out of the game. And they wouldn't have been able to res him or anything. And then it would have just been burning through a, a Harrier, you know? Okay, so Groshton does have Save Yourselves, uh, Contemplation of Purity, and uh, Voice of Truth. So Mantra of Truth. Uh, utilizing sword focus for damage output and sustainability, of course. So the first going on to the revenant. I suppose if they can burn through his infused light early, then he's a he's a priority target. They're not hitting him right now, but he is getting resustained by Groshaton. There's the uh, elixir X coming in to hard punish, and Groshaton is trying to negate a lot of this damage, but he's going to be doing damage of his own. Uh, they use the jumping puzzle there to prevent the engagement there from Sin. Um, Again, they should stay on Tenebrae. Tenebrae will be their, their main focus the entire uh, the entire fight. Watch what Sindon is doing though. He is trying to find opportunity to engage. There's the unrelenting assault. He saw two into that, which was an evade frame. Tenebrae is on 20% health. Flanky strike Larsenus. Floody comes straight back in, I suppose, with uh, Elixir's up. There's the Elixir U because he knows he's going to get knocked. Watch Tenebrae. He uses his infused light. They both disengage. So they do not heal through that infused light proc. He switches straight back out to... Uh, to Shiro, Assassin Stance. Oh my god, dude. Floody is so unlucky. He has had two tornadoes in a fucking row. I feel like for a game like this, Prime Light Beam would have been just like on on the on the uh it hitting the nail on the head because you, you can't play Elixir X and just hope with RNG. You need consistency. Sin is getting hard pressured now by both of them. He does not have any more sustainability. He does go down to the pressures there, and I don't think that Floody is gonna be able to res him there either. So rip. And uh, this is now a 2v1 into Floody. I think Prime Light Beam would have actually resulted in Tenebrae dying there. But getting getting Tornado twice in a row, like Jesus fucking Christ, that's painful. Parkour is unfair? Nah, it's not. It's it's smart play. You know that. RIP to Syndrona and Floody. Groshton and Tenebrae do proceed to the next round. Uh, let's see if we can get in that Kazer's fight. Here we go. Hopefully, we haven't missed too much here. I think we're just in time. I don't think anybody's played around yet. Hey, nice! <laughs> he will never hear the end of it. Yep, let him know he's a loser, Peach. You tell him right now. <laughs> All right, so uh, we do see the uh, the core guardian uh, alongside Drazy on the Mirage. So this is exactly the same comp as we saw before. Uh, Misha is on... Oh, so he's running carrying amulet on the uh, sword t sword torch, and they have axe pistol. Uh, he does still have the portal for uh, big plays, <laughs> and we see Zan on the hard light arena spectrum shield mortar kit. Uh, he's actually running sword shield, so that's pretty good. That's very effective into mirage output. You do get to negate a lot of the uh, the burst, uh, and does have good stun lock potential on the uh, the shield. Is it shield forest? Or not? Is the stun? I can't actually remember. They disengage with the shield. That's uh, with the with the portal, rather not with the shield. I've got my words mixed up. He eats a lot of burst. He could disengage back on the portal if he wanted to. AOE knockdown. It's massive burst from the core guardian. Does have healing turret coming up, so can resustain. However, the core guardian cannot. The core guard does go down, and he will be straight up punished. They're going to focus onto uh, Drazy right now. Misha has gone down, so they're securing this. They're, okay, he gets this. He used the uh, Corona Burst to get the stab before he got the stun. I've already got the uh, the Stomp rather, and now it's 2v1 into Drazy. So this, I believe, is going to go uh, in the favor of the blue team. Illusionary Ambush to uh, drop the target there from Zan. Zan is in close pursuit. Does Zan have the uh, reveal trait line in Alchemy? Uh, no, he's not. Of course he's not. He's running tools, is he? He's running uh, inventions. What am I talking about in Alchemy? Um, so he's not running lock on. So if you know if, if Drazy does want to disengage, then he can. Uh, in stealth, he won't get revealed, but I don't think it will really uh, do that much for him. He has gone down, obviously, and that is going to proceed to the next round. 
He plays my build. Are you interested? This is the uh, the build. Dude, I watched your video. I know the build. You showed me. You actually sent me a link. This is the same build I think that Larry P's been running for the, the entire season, pretty much, as well. Although, actually, I think Larry P runs uh, experimental turrets. Can't remember. At least I've, I think I've seen him use it in an AT. Here we go. He runs at Exibian Tools. Oh, okay. There is a slight difference then. Okay, so the initial target obviously is the Core Guard. His Litany of Wrath is on cooldown now. Uh, so he does not have resustain. The only thing that he has left is his immunity frame, and Zan can immediately disengage should he wish to, because obviously, you know, when that um when that healer's on cooldown, when they've used all their bursts and Zan has nothing left, he can disengage. Which is smart, it's smart portal play. Misha disengages in stealth. Zan is eating a lot of damage. That's the shield for to block. Elixir S has been used. That's his passive. He still has Spectrum Shield, which is great. So he gets to negate a lot of the damage there from Drazy. They turn their uh, attention to the Core Guard, and now they're going to follow up onto Drazy. And that's going to be it, surely. Misha follows up, gets the... Did he get a daze there on the on the, the Sword 1 dash? I didn't see it. Either way, he doesn't really have that much... Uh, or any methodology, in fact, of resustaining. He puts down the Chaos Field. Or Chaos Storm, I should say. It does not matter. Even with the Aegis up time... It changes nothing. So, blue team, do proceed. That is Zan and Misha going towards what I can only assume is going to be the final. Oh! Yeah, yeah. I've, I've already corrected myself there, Selfish. I know. I know, I know. Someone help Mystic. I don't really care about the fractals, though. I don't, I don't really know enough about the initial usage of fractals. If anybody does know, please help him out there. This is a 1v1. Luke Tor is using Scourge. This is on probably Curse's... Sorry, bit. Oh, no. Blood Magic. So, Blood Magic you with Sage. You hey, like man, thank you for parrot. that sub, dude. Welcome, welcome, welcome. That is one pixel out as well. Fuck, I hate that. Um, Necritu is playing Wells Reaper. So they actually are running double Necro. They have sustainability on Night Amulet. Okay, so Toughness is a bit of a tank, but will be doing a ton of damage. Uh, Lardu, obviously... Uh, wait, Lardu just sometimes plays Power. So could he be playing Power? He is! He's Power Shatter! Ooh, so he does have the Great Sword and the uh, Sword Torch. So Torch for uh, Disengage and uh, probably for... Uh, I would just say it's probably just the Blinds as well. Maybe. It's kind of... It's more of a, a defensive style of play when you run Torch. Uh, and then you have Gautier Guardian who is playing Core Guard. So they do have very, very high spike potential on this build. Gautier Guardian forced to use Renewed Focus, his uh, immunity. And they're just going to they're gonna hammer him, dude. He's got a lot of damage. They're going to turn their attention towards Lardu now. Lukator is looking to go down as well, but he has a ton of life force. Sandflare was on 0 0.8 seconds. Now what we need is... They get the res anyway. There was no way they were going to get that storm. And now Lardu is going to go down through this persistent pressure. And it looks to me like the uh, the blue team are probably going to win here. I don't think that Lardu can sustain this. There's conditions. There's a ton of fucking damage. There's the chill. Feels bad, man. 128. Now get me in that game with the four members of rank 55, dude. I'm hyped about that game. Get your asses in that game right now. Let's go! Let's watch this. This is going to be the best match of the game. Best match of the entire tournament. Maybe. 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 Maybe, maybe, maybe. My man. Any giveaways? Yeah, I might do one after shit, uh, at the, the final. Fuck? Yo, Sin, what the fuck, dude? Yo! <laughs> Feels good, man. Thank you for the host. Welcome, everybody. Have you guys heard of Twitch Prime, by the way? No, I'm joking. Don't worry about it. We're about to win this rank 55 against rank 55. We do have Wing and uh, Cookie playing against Zan and Misha. Okay? Uh, so we do have Wing playing Sage Amulet with Staff, Scepter Torch. Running Blood Magic for uh, good sustain uh, throughout. They do have the uh, Sand Flare as well. That's a lot of damage right there on a wing. Uh, he's able to resustain. He does throw down the Ghastly Breach. 
uh, and they, they turn their attention directly towards Zan. Now, Zan is... He's able to re-sustain off that, which is, you know, decent. Uh, I'm surprised he managed to re-sustain off that. Holy cow. Uh, now, they may be able to uh, make something happen here, but they do have crazy sustain on Cookie. Zan uses uh, Misha's portal there to disengage, but Wing is going to be in close pursuit. Uh, there's the uh, resustain of the healing turret, and he does have Elixir C that he can use to get rid of all of those conditions, but I'm not sure it's going to be enough. He's going to go down here to the condition application of Wing, and uh, Misha is not able to get that. So Misha's possibly going to die here in the 1v2. I mean, I'd, I'd expect him to anyway. There's way too much condition application there on Wing. Now Cookie's just going to be doing damage. Come on. Everybody's friends here, dudes. Poor old Misha, man. Prestige engages on the uh, axis of symmetry. Should run null field. Yeah, I mean, that would be a way of uh, countering the condition application there of, uh, of the Scourge. I mean, otherwise, they're just going to have to kite like fuck. You just don't want to play into them. Don't play into them until the two-minute mark. That's a lot of damage. <laughs> What's Misha's build? Misha has Dueling Illusions. Uh, he's running Sword Torch on Axe Pistol with Carry Nemo Adventure. You have been shagged Yo. by a rare Pooping parrot. all day. <laughs> Thank you for the Twitch Prime, my brother. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, and his utilities, I believe... Oh, there we go. You can see them anyway. So he has Signet of Humility. Ooh, but he is running uh, Portal and he does have Blink and Arcane Thievery. Um... I wouldn't really blink an eye if this was used in uh, in conquest, but however, they you know obviously signet of humility is not better. Um, they might be looking to oh they so they have mowed out the scourge. Is that to punish the firebrand as a result or or what? They didn't really manage to get anything from that mower stance. Both red team members did take about 20% health, but they may be able to resustain if Cookie is given a moment to breathe. Cookie is obviously the target here for both of them, but Cookie is doing a really good job at actually kiting. He used Zan there on the sword too to teleport away uh, from Misha so that he could resustain himself, and there it is. Um, Cookie does a ton of damage, dude. Oh my god. So this is obviously... Uh, this is Harrier. So he is running Harrier Firebrand on the Radiance uh, trade line. So he's... This is just unfortunate because I don't think that... The blue team actually have a method um, of prevention of damage here and sustainability. I mean, look at that barrier, dude. He just applied 10,000 barrier on that F5 and that's going to persist after the two minute mark and there won't be any sustainability for the blue team. So it's, it's hard for me to say. I almost feel like the, the red team need to make something happen before the two minute mark because I think that both of them are going to be very, very susceptible to damage. But again, uh, there is the sustain of the barrier that's going to be doing work at that point. Um, I don't know if like the blue team are actually trying a different method methodology here. They're playing relatively safe, but they do uh, have their, their kite ability as well. Zan is just running around in circles, waiting potentially. Yeah, he's kiting. He's waiting for that two-minute mark. He gets shut down by the Scourge, knocked down, and uh, now they're all in close pursuit. Wing is very low. It's going to force Cookie to actually answer to this to heal him. And now there's the pull from the Prismatic Singularity. Zan is now caught in Ghastly Breach as well. He'll... Heals through it and uses... Uh, actually, no, Elixir C was not used. Zan forced to use uh, passive there. Port was out, disengage, healing turret. Holographic shockwave for the uh, extra heals there. He does have the toss Elixir C as well to, to remove uh, conditions on uh, on AoE from, uh, from his teammate. Now there's no healing. Zan is going down there. Misha's now waiting this out. Is this the right play? <laughs> Misha does have evade frames. He has his immunity coming up on distortion. There's the... Uh, wait, does that work? Wait, so you can do that? I didn't realize that you could actually rally. Oh, <laughs> Wing and Cookie do take the win there. That's twice in a row. Two rounds taken. Rank 55 into rank 55. God damn. It sucks to see this winning, dude. It does suck to see this winning. Dustin Madison to Uriel. I've got 10 seconds to make a keyword. Oh my god. Okay. Exclamation mark. Sinned. Lost. Exclamation mark. Sinned. Lost. If you want to enter the giveaway, alright? 
All right, Tenebrae is playing Power Shiver Rev, Sword, Sword Staff, probably. Roshan is on Harrier, uh, Radiance Firebrand. Actually, no, wait, he's not running Harrier. He doesn't want to Harrier Amulet. He runs Menders with Radiance. Uh, so these are... This is relatively sustainable. Um, but he uh, he is going to be doing a, a bunch of damage if he does get the opportunity. The blue team have double Necromancers. So again, that's the Scourge uh, on Lucator. So Blood Magic with the Sage Amulet. Going to be getting massive barrier uptime. And then, of course, you have the Reaper who uh, is on Knight's Amulet for high toughness, but does have Blood Magic as well. Uh, and uh, his sustainability, I suppose, when he gets to use Shroud is going to be huge. There's the Well of Power and Well of Corruption. Good use of Sandswell to disengage away from the fight there. They're, they're using terrain to... Uh... Okay, so they proc the Infuse Light onto the Revenant. Revenant is forced out. And now Grosstorn is going to be looking to sustain this as much as possible. Renewed Focus has been used and that resets the Tome skills. Uh, so that's able to... Uh, that enables him to resustain Tenebrae. Tenebrae is obviously still the target here. I actually think that the uh, the Necromancers here do have the most sustain when it comes to uh, the two Minimarks. So if anything, the red team need to make something happen before that because otherwise they just forfeit. Uh, blue team are one game up already. I, maybe, I think the blue team know that. I think the blue team know that they win at the, uh, the two minute cutoff point. So they're just actually, they're not even forcing the fight. They're quite happy to wait. Tenebrae does have a ton of damage. Infused Light is used. That's his last opportunity for healing and probably in the next 20 seconds. He's not going to find an opportunity because I think Infused Light comes up just as the uh, the healing uh, switches off. They force the disengage. Grosjean needs to heal himself up before that cutoff point as well. Spam all of your healing abilities now, dude. You're not going to gain any benefit from them later on. I think that was the Corrupt of the Stab. There's the engage. And now we see the actual battle starting. Tenebrae... Uh, is going to be using the Evade Frame of Unrelenting Assault directly into the barrier of the Scourge, and that is not going to translate into anything good for that red team. They are both still full health, dude. Nekaritu did got no get knocked back. Oh, this is just so ridiculous. Star 5 gets knocked. Luke is down, but ne Nekaritu is there with the Reaper Shroud. That's the game. That's game, dude. That's it. There's just the cleave of the one spam. Lucator does rally. So the rally still works. Okay, so that's good to know. Rally does still work, even persisting past that two-minute mark. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm not I'm not uh, quite happy that you know, that's still in the game. But You have to remember this is the first time it's done, guys. All of this is, you know, it's, it's up in the air. And uh, it's hard to say what's going to happen in the future or, you know, what they thought about going into this. But I'm sure that when it comes down to um, when it comes down to what they're going to look to do uh, in the future, I'm sure they're going to make adjustments. This is the finals, guys, and it's uh, it's still best of three. OK, this is not best of fives, although I would like it to be. It's not. So Lukator is still playing the same build. Uh, this is the Blood Magic Scourge, Sage Amulet, Rune of Sanctuary. And then they have the Reaper on the uh, Paladin Amulet this time, not Knights, uh, on Rune of Div. So this is with Axe, Warhorn, and Staff. Um, Blood Magic Spite and Reaper. Uh, me, Cookie Monk, is still playing Radiance Firebrand. And uh, Wing is uh, still playing uh, Blood Magic with Sage on Rune Traveler. So exactly the same builds as we saw before, apart from the slight adjustment on the red team. Uh, I do think that this is in the favor of the blue team simply based on rating. They're doing a really good job at actually punishing the, the red team hard here. Um, and actually, I think that the map itself is in the benefit of the blue team. Uh, and that's because they have a ton of room to kite away from the output of the red team. And that, that just means that they can just punish hard. And this is exactly what they're doing. And Negritu does eat the ghastly... Wait, is that the ghastly breach from Lucator? That was the ghastly breach of the red team. So actually, the blue team fully commit underneath the ghastly breach in order to win that. And that means that they've taken a lot of damage. They are pulsing uh, a lot of conditions there, but that's removed very quickly by Cookie. Uh, that was the blood magic reset there onto the red team as well. Both of them are running the blood magic traits. So they do both have transfusion, I believe. Yeah, so they get the revival pulse of 2%. Um, and uh, there's Lesser Well of Blood as well, which is on the 35 second cooldown now. So they have an, an incredible amount of, uh, of red rev percentage. Uh, and as we, yep, there's the Ritual of Life. But he is not running Transfusion on uh, on Shroud 4. So he does have Vampiric Rituals, which he does uh, 
Actually, he is. Yeah, he's running well, so that's that's standard. He he does have the lesser protection, uh, le lesser percentage on the well of blood there that he can activate. Uh, so he gets the the reduced cooldown on that. Um, I would expect this to go to the two minute mark. Red team are at a lesser going into this. They are at the disadvantage. The blue team do have the height advantage, and uh, you see they do have the barrier for the blue team as well. So it's not like Cookie. Cookie does use the focus five to block a lot of the damage going in, as well. There's Reaper Shroud already used. Wing is the priority target here, so they have waited for that two-minute mark before engaging on them. That's pretty smart. But uh, Nekritu is actually going to get forced away from his uh, his shroud there. No sustainability. Does have uh, Plague Signal to transfer those conditions over should he need to. And it's it's not enough, dude. You will not be able to rest him. Rest trades do not work. You're going to make something happen quick. Otherwise, he's going to die. And there we go. That is the first round. This is going to... I think both times this is going to go through to the, uh, the two-minute cutoff point. There's no with, with the sustainability of, of both of these uh, these necromancers, you're never gonna uh, see anything happen before the two minute mark. Why did he leave Shroud? Because I, th I think he wanted it uh, as an opportunity. He wanted to build it before going into the two minute mark. I think he wanted that full Shroud, and he he probably realized that he was wasting a lot of it. Why not use Signet? I mean, he he had the opportunity to use Plague Signet and transfer there, but it was uh, it was the power application of Cookie on the Radiance build that actually killed him there. So. Uh, it wasn't the conditions that killed him. Although he was still taking damage from that. Terrain is important here. This is this is a very open map that gives you a lot of kite ability. Obviously, you can't run in circles, but you know, using the terrain there, especially into the likes of a necromancer that pretty much is very very immobile. Um, you know, Cookie at least has uh, a good amount of damage output that he can utilize. So they're just playing this waiting game once again. Cookie's pushing in, but I'm not really sure that... Oh, he does get the pull. Nice. Did he pull him into a, into a shade at all? Was there a shade down? Like, Okay, now there's a shade placement. Luke is getting hard punished here. That is the Scourge. Once again, he... Holy fucking damage, Batman. Okay, so the immediate press. I think that was the, uh, the F5. So they do have the barrier there. They did apply a ton of torment. Wing is the priority target here. He'll get reset. Cookie's going to heal. And they're just going to disengage. Lugato is solo here. He doesn't, have, he doesn't have anything left. That's it. That's it, ladies and gents. Unless Nick, Nick can get the rest here. He does have the lesser well of blood underneath him. One more hit and that's it. And that's the final. That's it, ladies and gents. We are done and we see two rank 55 members taking the duo of Destiny title here for the, uh, the special event. Now, this thing is only going to be seen on these two guys. It is not going to be accessible by anybody else until the next event, which may be in two or three months. However, it's probably not going to be a 2v2 event. It might be Tournament of Legends, which is uh, coming back uh, soon.tm.